Tech ball is, is the brainchild of three Hungarians, Gabor, um, Yuri and myself, and we all contributed different fields. Gabor is very creative. He is responsible for coming up with, with the ideas. Uh, Yuri is, is strategy, his vision. He, he knows where we need to get. And I'm more the engineer, I'm more the computer scientist, because uh, eventually we had to physically create the table and find the perfect curve and then the bounce rate and a lot of technical details, um, which are important details, but certainly that's how the whole journey started. And the inspiration was simply the love for sport and the joy, what we still have, even up today, when we play tag ball. Because there is no physical contact between the players. Uh, at our age, we don't want to get injured. We don't want any young, motivated player to uh, do a tackle uh, on us. But in tag ball, we still have the same ball as we used to play with football. And also, we have the competition but we don't need that many people. We can play it in a garage, in the garden. So it just makes everything easier. You know, no wives complaining why you leave and so on and so on. And you don't have 22 or 12 players. Much easier to organize a game of two or a game of four. So that's how the, the, the story started. Um, and then the evolution of the table was from the first adjustable wooden versions to the later uh, composite uh, and more endurable uh, solutions. The first ones were uh, about experimenting and trying whether this works or not. Then we created a version which uh, was ready for even a space journey. <laughs> um, it was like 470 kilograms. And then we started to create the commercial version so it can really be spread. Um, and we use different technologies, sheet mold compound at the later stage, uh, high pressure laminates at the earlier stages, and so on and so on. Um, the evolution was in many funny moments. For instance, the first versions, we didn't have the, the, the plexinet and the plexinet wasn't even longer, wider than the table. It was exactly the same, but then we completely uh, understood immediately that it's not going to work, that the ball is always going next to the net. So like in ping pong and in tennis, you had to wider the net and so on and so on. So a lot of, a lot of uh, good memories about the evolution. And we had like bouncing machines, uh, which showed the bounce rate. Everything was very technical and all measured. The sport has certainly got a flying start. Now, three years after the International Federation, we have more than 90 national federations. And I think the fast track of tag ball is still this pure love for this small competitive uh, element. And at the same time, it's if you think about sports, football is popular because it's cheap. You can have a ball and you can play football. At tag ball, we just need the table. So our duty and responsibility is to get the table wherever we can, everywhere. And that's why then the ball is already given, so it's accessible. And everyone who knows a little bit of football, who plays a little bit of football, can in 10, 20 minutes with a short learning curve, learn tag ball. It's not an easy game, but the challenge is like, to use a Hungarian example, with Rubik's Cube. It's not easy to get the Rubik's Cube right, but still everyone is trying it, playing it, and so on. So then you eventually get it, and the learning curve is relatively short compared to, for instance, snowboarding, where you have a week and you hurt yourself. This doesn't happen in tag ball. The club development also plays a vital role. This is where we see the future. In the grassroots levels, 
and to have a huge base where the best competitive players will arise from. The more clubs we have, everywhere is going to be a strong base for the national federations and to have an official sport in the country. And right now that guys has recognized tag ball, I think we can clearly say that tag ball is now closer to becoming an Olympic sport than not even becoming a sport at all. That's obvious, isn't it? But if you think about it, usually 40, 50 years are needed for such an organic growth for a sport. This is what we on purpose and on conscious, consciously, we try to speed up this process. And this only happens with the support of the national federations, the clubs and the athletes. Yes, everyone is saying that COVID is making life difficult. Of course, World Championships of Tag Ball has been cancelled last year. Um, but COVID has given us the opportunity to get the paperwork done, to get the federations and the system in place. So at the same time, it also gave us an opportunity. So I still look at it as a time when we can really progress and fast forward the sport in many countries. And I really hope to see by the end of 2021, at least 150 tag ball federations, active operating federations. Um, this year, the competition started. There is the calendar on fitech.org. Download the Fitech app. You can easily register yourself. And we hope that continental and the intercontinental, the world championships can be easily held by the end of the year. Worst case, maybe in a bubble where we can safely hold these competitions. Health is priority. We don't want anyone to, to risk anything. But we want fairness, so if no one can travel, we don't want such a competition where someone feels that I could not make it because of external reasons. Um, sometimes they ask us, I guess, inventors, co-founders of the sport, what, what is the feeling about this? And for us, it's not something we really can describe with words when we see images and videos of kids playing in random remote places, the, the game of tag ball. Um, I don't think we realize that what's going on with, with us and with, with this sport. Um, but I hope that maybe my kids or even my grandchildren will one day realize this. So probably that's the best answer. We are more than proud. Again, this is teamwork. So, I, I truly hope that everyone feels the same because what people do in their own countries as national federation, this is the same. You are bringing, you are creating a new sport in the, in the country. And, um, and then certainly the other question is always about the famous players. What is that? How are we doing that? The global superstars. Um, and how do they inspire the next stackers? Well, these players simply by their, their history, they are inspirations. Um, you know, they are legends, they are idols. And um, people like Ronaldinho and Messi and Ronaldo, they are followed by hundreds of millions. So certainly this is helping and making our journey faster. Social media is making everything faster. But at the same time, I think that the, the conversion with these players is that they don't do this for money. They do it for the same reason as we did it in the beginning, just because we love to play the game. And we love to have this feeling of competition with friends and you can play this with anyone your family members and so on so this is how we we think um, should work and should be it's it's still the same game 
and it shouldn't be anything else. Of course you can play for a lot of money and money is always poisoning a lot of things in sport and you need money of course but at the same time when you can represent your country when your family members can see you compete and when you do everything then that's probably what more important least what matters in in life the the federation is of course focusing on social change as well because what can you give if not hope and chance with sport and i think that's a, an alternative version tag ball you know football is is difficult tag ball is new there is more chance in tag ball and and the chance of tag ball becoming very popular is also much higher simply the nature of some sports limit who can do that simply sometimes it's the physics winter sports most probably won't be that successful in africa but at the same time um tag ball doesn't have these limitations all over the world it's the same with the table so that's where we see that with csr campaigns our responsibility is to take the table to places where no other chance would enable them to access the, the, the table. And that's what we have been doing, reaching it out to Burundi and a lot of places, refugee camps in Jordan. And this is beautiful, beautiful to get the pictures of barefoot kids playing the, the game. Um, and actually, even one of uh, our ambassadors, Christian Karambe, was pushing us for, for instance, to go to Jordan. Uh, so with Peace and Sport, we did this project together. The Tagbo family is united more than ever. I think COVID, COVID brought us together in virtual rooms, but we had such a high level of participation that we get so good feedback that I think it's it's like a, a movement that we are shaping together. Um, we are always very open to, to feedback. We want everything that together, the members, referees, club officials and the National Federation, together we do this because life has changed. Thanks to now the instant messaging and social media, we can really get the community's message out. We have 3.54 million followers and it's growing. So let's let's focus on that. And at the same time, let's get as much content out of this. So sharing is caring. So please care about getting, getting everything to us. Um, and then one more thing. It's about us playing tag ball. And that's again being very personal that's something which probably i miss the most that i don't play tag ball that much as i want to because i'm just busy with a lot of other things and if you would ask me what is the only thing which i don't like in tag ball is that i cannot play tag ball as often and when i play I often have to play it in suit because I do demonstrations and I join because I can't resist it. So for this year, my resolution is that I try to find for my health as well and with Gabor and Yuri that we play tag ball like we used to play in the garage. Thank you. Stay safe, stay tech. Let's do this.